Hey, welcome to the VHF UHF channel and uh, I wanted to share with you guys a little tip on how to check for propagation conditions on different bands. Um, one of the things that you can use to understand first of all that propagation on the VHF UHF bands is very very unique and weather patterns and weather changes in uh, temperature like um, you know when they're cold fronts, warm fronts which create uh, temperature inversions, uh, sometimes trap signals in layers of the atmosphere. So if you are wondering if there are, is such a phenomenon happening in the bands, um, try to check out on some frequencies that you know of. Now in North America, one of the things you can do is tune into the NOAA weather radio frequencies or the Environment Canada frequencies in the VHF range. Um, in Canada. So here I have a standard beacon that I understand you know I this is the Burlington Vermont NOAA weather station on 162.400 that's about a hundred miles away from me and it comes quite well. Light snow accumulation possible. But between 162.400 and 162.550 there are several channels of weather and I usually hear this one. I usually hear this one in Bromont, in uh, Eastern Townships. And I usually hear my local one here in Montreal, which is on 550. But in between, there are other channels like 525. And 525 is a good one for me because usually it's static. But when there are temperature inversions or some peculiar propagation, I will hear Northern New York state um, weather stations come in here. And I know that when that happens, suddenly it's interesting to see that there's probably enhanced propagation across the bands. Uh, same goes with 475. Because now I hear Bromont, but sometimes it happens that it is overpowered by Mont Tremblant, which is uh, north of me. So, you know, depending on the conditions, it's pretty interesting to listen to these frequencies and see what you can hear. And by the way, that works even on, you know, little portable radios. You don't have to have big gun receivers like I have to do that. And it's very interesting because you can, um, you know, check out patterns of propagation using these frequencies. Um, usually what I would do sometimes is leave the radio on 525 in my case with a low volume and if I hear anything I know that there's something happening. Now say you don't have uh, NOAA weather stations or any weather stations in the VHF or UHF range what you could do for uh, that is tune the 2 meter amateur band Take note and try to search for all the amateur radio repeaters that are at, uh, you know, I'd say 50, 100, 150 miles or up to 150 kilometers around where you live. And tune the bands from time to time and try to see if you can hear some repeaters that you wouldn't hear normally. And by doing that, you'll know that there's enhanced propagation. So sometimes on some frequencies you'll hear a repeater that is unusual that you never hear before. Or what you can also try is tuning a known repeater and if you start hearing stations from very far away that is not usual for that repeater, you might you know, be under the spell of some kind of special propagation condition. So try that out and uh, you never know and um, you know temperature inversions and all sorts of weird propagation modes happen across the bands uh, so even in UHF if you go into the 70 centimeters uh, frequency in UHF for amateur radio repeaters you'll also hear some unusual stuff sometimes here and temperature inversions will also affect these high frequencies so check it out and see what you can hear because it could be very very uh, interesting to check out. If you enjoy my videos, why not subscribe to my channel, you'll be informed when new videos are online and give us thumbs up if you like the videos. Thank you for watching.